Good morning, guys. Today we're going to look at the secant and cosecant graphs. And they're really just an extension of sine and cosine the way cotangent was an extension of tangent. Remember, the relationship between secant and cosecant and sine and cosine is that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Well, what that allows me to do is take my same shape, my same key points from my sine graph and my cosine graph, which I have here in red. This is y equals sine of x. This is y equals cosine of x. And just do the reciprocal of those key points. So let's go through and look at it. Now, if I'm looking at uh, 0, we've already talked about this with tangent. The reciprocal, or sorry, the cotangent, the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Reciprocal of 0 is undefined. So I would get this vertical asymptote there. Well, here, reciprocal of 1 is 1. That point stays the same. Reciprocal of uh, 0 is undefined again. Reciprocal of negative 1 stays the same. And the reciprocal of 0 is still undefined. Now, we get the same relationship that we have with tangent cotangent, where I got certain points, but there's not enough to make a curve. Well, let's just look at a few other points. This would be approximately a half. Well, what's the reciprocal? See how that's a half, half over between 0 and 1? What's the reciprocal of 1 half? The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So at this point, the reciprocal would put me up here. Again, approximately 1 half. So the reciprocal at that point is 2. So what I start to see happen is when I get reciprocal, realistically what I'm doing is just taking this curve and flipping it up. Now there's a little bit more going on than that, but that's the general idea of what we have happening. This curve is being flipped away from the x-axis because we can't cross the x-axis uh, because we have those uh, vertical asymptotes. Same idea here. This is negative a half at this point, so when we flip it down, it would go on to about negative 2, negative a half down to negative 2, so we get the same shape. So this blue graph that we have here is actually one cycle of the cosecant function. Uh, and realistically, you're going to go through and do it the exact same way you would a sine graph, but instead of connecting the dots and bouncing between them, at those maximum and minimum points, we're going to be curved away from them, staying between those asymptotes. We're going to be moving away from the x-axis instead of always staying around the x-axis. The key points and the uh, transformations uh, vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, period, increments, all those things are going to be done the exact same way. And we get the same relationship here between secant and cosine. If we go through and do this, reciprocal of 1 stays 1, reciprocal of 0 is undefined, reciprocal of negative 1 gives us um, negative 1, reciprocal of undefined, sorry, reciprocal of 0 is undefined, and again, reciprocal of 1 is 1. All right, going through one half would correspond to approximately well, would correspond to two. So we've eliminated that portion of the graph. Here, uh, one half, sorry, negative one half would be about negative two. Negative a half would be about negative two. So we get this curve that stays between our asymptotes, and we get the same picture that we had with secant, or sorry, cosecant and sine, just, as we talked before, shifted 90 degrees and flipped across the x, or flipped across the y-axis. It's the same picture, same idea, same relationships between secant and cosecant that we had between sine and cosine. So I'm going to build my graph using my sine and cosine ideas that uh, amplitude is A, but it's not true amplitude. It's really the height, in this case, of those boundary points that we can't get below, whether the local minimum or the local maximum. Uh, period is still going to be 2 pi over b, because there's still going to be the same width to get one full cycle, a top half and a bottom half, or a bottom half and two top parts. Um, increments are still going to be period over 4. Your direction is still going to be the same. It's going to be increasing coming out of the origin for a uh, anything related to sine, uh, if the sines of A and B match. Uh, for cosine or secant, because they're related, they're going to look at just A. 
If A is positive, we're going to be starting at a maximum. If A is negative, then we'll be starting at a minimum, and we don't care what happens to B in there. All right, so let's go through and let's graph a couple of secant and cosecant functions. Okay, guys, let's look at this function here. Y equals negative pi over 2 cosecant of X plus pi over 3. Let's go through and identify our key values so we can build the graph. Amplitude, again, it's like tangent, cotangent. It's not a true amplitude, but it gives us that key point at those midpoints. Um, is going to be absolute value of A. So absolute value of A is negative pi over 2. So pi over 2, which is approximately 1.6. Vertical shift, what we add here on the end, which is none. So I'm going to put that on there. Uh, horizontal shift. Horizontal shift is going to be H, which is going to be negative pi over 3. Remember, we take the opposite of, what we're, of what's here because we want what's being subtracted from that. So that corresponds to left pi over 3 units. Uh, period is 2 pi over b. b is the coefficient of x, which is 1. So 2 pi over 1 equals 2 pi. Um, increments is period over 4. So 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. So each block, we're going to go pi over 2 unit. And then our direction. Direction. Uh, for cosecant, because cosecant is just like sine, and I want to think of that when I'm doing direction and when I'm actually building my point. Um, sine, we have to look at both A and B. A and B have opposite signs. Um, one's negative and one's positive. So opposite signs tell me I'm decreasing coming out of the origin. So we're going to say decreasing... from origin. Now let's get our key point. Um, started at zero, always starting at zero, and then we have to take into account any horizontal shifts. Well, the horizontal shift was left three. So I've got a minus three, pi over three, sorry, left pi over three. So if I subtract pi over three, that's going to give me negative pi over three. That's going to be my initial value. Grab my marker. And then we add our increments four times. So we're going to add pi over 2, uh, which is going to give me uh, negative pi over 3 plus pi over 3 going through to the arithmetic. Uh, that's negative 2 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 is going to be 1 pi over 6, which is approximately um, 0.5. Oh, this is approximately negative 1.05. Uh, add another pi over 2. Uh, since everything's in denominators of 6s, we'll think of that as 3 pi's over 6. So 1 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 is 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And don't get bogged down in all this arithmetic here. The calculator will go through and add fractions for you. Just set the pi to the side and focus on 1 half, 1 third, 1 six, and just go through and calculate those fractions if they're getting too much for you. Uh, 2 pi over 3, go through and approximate, and you get approximately 2.1. Uh, add another pi over 2. So 4 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 should give us 7 pi over 6, uh, which is approximately 3.7. And then add the last pi over 2, which will be Another 3 pi over 6 gives us 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3, which is approximately, what, 5 times 1-ish, so 1.5, or 5.2, sorry, 5.2. All right, so there's our values. Let's put them on the graph. Um, amplitude, we didn't go up or down any, so we're going to say it's 1.6 and negative 1.6. So there's my... Pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Uh, let's go with our starting point at negative pi over 3, so negative 1.05. Mark to my x axis. So I've got negative pi over 3, then we go to pi over 6, then we go to 2 pi over 3.
which should be 2.1, not 1.1. 2 pi over 3, uh, then we're going to go to 7 pi over 6. And if you've done all this correctly, 5 pi over 3, this should space relatively equally. Okay. So I can see uh, we know pi over 2 is about 1.6, so there's about 1 and a half, 1 and a half, 1 and a half, 1 and a half. Okay, see, there was our 1 and a half. So we can see we get that consistent spacing. Now we just start to build the graph. Remember, it's like a sine curve. Cosecant is like sine, so we're going to start at the equilibrium. And the direction to us, we're going to decrease from the origin. Or in this case, the negative pi over 3, because we zero is where we typically start. So that's why we're thinking origin really means negative pi over 3. So we're going to start at negative pi over 3. We're going to decrease. So that means I've got to go to my minimum. At my next value, my pi over 6, going back to my equilibrium at the next value, the 2 pi over 3. I'm at the maximum for the next value, the 7 pi over 6, and we bounce back down to the minimum. I'm oh, sorry, to the equilibrium. So we're going to build this the exact same way we did our uh, sine and cosine graphs. Well, the difference is instead of connecting all this, these aren't x intercepts, those are vertical asymptotes. So I have vertical asymptotes at these equilibrium points and we have our curves away from the x-axis at the uh, altitude, the, the local maximum left local minimum, so my altitude points. So we get this curve, uh, or this picture for y equals negative pi over 2 cosecant x plus pi over 3. Same process we did for sine or cosine, it's just how we connect the dots at the very end. Okay, let's look at this, this secant function. y equals 3 secant of negative pi x minus 1. Start with amplitude. Amplitude is going to have absolute value of 3, which is going to give me 3. Vertical shift is going to be k. k is a negative 1, so that's going to correspond to down 1. Well, my arrows are all I can complain about. Uh, horizontal shift is what we're subtracting from x, which is nothing in this case, so there is none. Uh, period is 2 pi over, it's realistically absolute value of b. So 2 pi over pi gives us a period of 2. Uh, increments are going to be period over 4. So 1 half, so this one should be easy because we don't have all those pi's to deal with when we're adding. And then direction. I'm going to treat secant like I would cosine. Cosine does not care about B as far as its direction. It, it only looks at A. So A is positive. That means we're going to start at a maximum. So direction is going to be start max. Let's actually figure out our points now. Typical start is at zero on the y-axis. Now, um, do we have any horizontal shift to change that? No, so we're still going to start at zero. Then we're going to go through and uh, add our increments. So plus a half gives me a half. Plus a half, one half plus one half is one. Plus another half is three halves. Plus another half is two. So we can see that our points are going to be at 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, and 2. All right, so let's go through and plot all this information. Amplitude is 3, but we have a vertical shift down 1. So my sinusoidal axis, my equilibrium line, is going to be at negative 1. And then my amplitude's got to be 3 off of that. So I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3 to 2. I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3 to negative 4. So we can see our graph has already been shifted down one unit. Our horizontal shift, we already talked about that. So we get to put our uh, points on the line now. So we're going to start at zero. So we're at zero. Uh, and it's okay if you write these points on that graph or on that line. It makes them, I guess, a little bit less cloudy. We're at a half. We're at one. We're at three halves. And we're at two. So there are the key uh, values on the x-axis. 
Now we just start to put it together using direction. Start at the maximum. So at zero, we're at a maximum of two. And we just work our way down and across, down and across like we would for a cosine. All our points are going to bounce between these high and low points. So we're going to go down to equilibrium at one half, down to the minimum at one, back to equilibrium, back to the sinusoidal axis at three halves, and then keep working my way up to the maximum. So we get our points just like we would if it was a cosine graph. We get that V shape or that U shape. Only difference is those are not x-intercepts. Now they are vertical asymptotes. They're vertical asymptote at one half and at three halves. We're going to turn away from the x-axis, away from the sinusoidal axis at my maximum and minimum points. So I get this picture. This is one cycle of y equals 3 secant of negative pi x minus 1. Same process, same strategy and techniques we used for set, uh, sine and cosine that we used for secant and cosecant. All you're doing is you're going to, once you get those points, you're going to draw vertical lines through the x-intercepts and you're going to turn your graphs away from that sinusoidal axis. Okay. I'll see you in class tomorrow, guys.